Oh, I feel like I am on heroin and getting my dick sucked at the same time because I should be in jail right now. The only reason why I didn't wake up in a jail cell this morning next to Big Joe with a DUI, because I should have gotten a DUI. The only reason is because a miracle happened to me. That's the only way I can describe it. God literally reached his hand down and grabbed me and pulled me out of the situation. And he said, I'm not letting this happen to you because I have too much in store for you. Keep doing exactly what you're doing because you're doing everything right. And you are about to enter Valhalla. Friday morning, you might remember because I don't. <laughs> um, I posted a video where the name was something like drinking before work or getting drunk before work. I don't remember exactly what it was and I don't want to know. Every time that I open my YouTube and I see it, I, I'm like, oh, <laughs> because I, but I'm not going to delete it because I believe that's sort of my whole mission is that I want to show people sides of the human condition that they might otherwise normally not see and show people that they deserve to be loved all the same. We deserve to be embraced for all that we are, not just the parts that we think everybody's gonna like. Even the parts of us that we think we should be, that people think I should be ashamed of. I'm not. And that's why I'm keeping the videos up. So Friday morning, I got very, very hammered. Um, and I guess it would probably be more accurate to say that I got even more drunk than I, than I already was because I had probably the worst week of my life last week. And I know I say that every week, but it really was. You saw it all play out in real time on my social medias. Um, I will say I am. I did think the gif of me drinking the bottle was very funny. Um, that was probably the worst moment of my life. So I'm glad that it gave everybody some mild entertainment. Um, really, I am. You know, that's great. So... I'm go the good thing about being drunk at work is that it makes it go really fast. So you're sort of like, and then all of a sudden it's five o'clock and it's time to leave. Um, there, fuck. Don't turn around, don't turn around. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I probably am going to have to make a whole other video about what happened on Friday because I had forgot that I had scheduled a patient for a, something called a ketamine infusion therapy. And let's just say that uh, Universal Studios is probably going to want to buy the rights for that afternoon. Um, but that's for another time. I get off work and I'm like, Whee! weekend baby i get in my car i'm like mm, put in my shades um and i'm like hell yes i pump up those tunes because it is the freaking weekend baby and i start i start drinking some more you know because i'm only i'm 10 minutes away i just want to say also i know i'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this but it's not that i don't think drunk driving is bad it's just that i think maybe it might be, people might be making a bigger deal about it than it actually is. Because I know all of you watching this have probably at some point in the last week driven somewhere when maybe you shouldn't have because you had a little too many of them. We all do it. It's normal. And we, so, but everybody likes to act all, you know, better than everybody else and holier than thou because they're like, oh my gosh, drunk driving is so bad. Please. And everybody does it. And most of the time, nothing happens. Most of the time, it's totally fine. So I just think that people say it's bad because they want to be good little rule followers. You know, they got straight A's in high school and they, and they haven't accepted the fact that that's not how life actually works. So now they have nothing else but to follow rules, you know. Anyway. I, you know, was drunk driving. But crap, I shouldn't have said that. 
I was not. I don't know if I was over the legal limit or not. We don't know. And we never will know. I probably wasn't. So we don't know. And I'm not admitting to anything, any crime. Okay. Um, I am driving along, feeling good. You know, uh, I'm pumping the Rolling Stones, Skimmy's Shelter. You know, the one that goes like, I'm not doing it right, but it's, it's a very good song. Um, all of a sudden I hear my phone go, and it's my sister. And for a second, I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe my parents are dead. So I pick it up really excitedly. And I'm like, hello. And she says, I'm at the airport. Where are you? You know, are, are you, are you, we're, we're at LAX. And I'm like, excuse me? And she says, yeah, where are you? Um, we're at, look, we're at zone 69, you know, or whatever it was. And then I'm like, crap. I completely forgot my sister and her Augustus Gloop of a son are coming to visit me for the whole week. So I'm, my sister is a fucking, it, it, she is like a thousand mosquitoes flew up her ass and then started puppeting her body like Geppetto. Um, so I'm trying to pretend that I'm not real time remembering that all of this is even happening at all. And I'm like, um, well, I got off work a little late. So I was wondering if it might be nicer for you guys and easier for you to get an Uber or a Lyft to my place. And you know how on in a cartoon, the phone, they'll, it'll just be like, you know, they'll hold the phone back and it's like, that's exactly what was happening. And so I'm like, Ugh, okay, I'm, I'll come, but just give me three hours because it's going to take me three hours to get there now. It's rush hour traffic. So, of course, I drink some more because drinking makes it very nice to do things that you don't want to do. You know, it's like, make you want to do this juice. Um, and yeah, I figured, well, I'm just going to be sitting in stop and go traffic anyway. So it's basically like, I'm just going to be in a chair waiting for the chair to get to somewhere else, you know, kind of going anyway. Um, but I don't know if I drank enough for it to be considered dr drunk driving. I don't know. Probably not. We'll never know. Right. And I'm not admitting to anything. Um, so I get to the airport and I pull over somewhere and I call my sister and I say, oh, I, this is important. I, when my sister planned this trip, she said, you know, she got all excited, like, oh, we can go, you know, we can go to Big Sur and we can go to all these places and we can go to Joshua Tree and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, wait, hold the phone. If you, I'm not going to be your own personal safari driver. Safari, like, in Africa, not Safari, the web browser. A lot of dorks follow me, so I got to make sure I specify that. Um, and I said, if you want to drive all around town, all around the country, then we're not, we're certainly not doing it in this car, because I am not going to put 2,000 extra miles on my car, just so that you guys can see, you know, so, uh, the, the uh, MacBook desktop wallpapers in real life. Um, and she puts up a fight, but eventually she relents and says, oh, fine, I'll get a rental car and we can drive around the rental car. So I pick up the rental car before I go to get them. So I'm in a rental car. That's a, another important detail. I'm driving to the airport. I get to the airport and I call my sister. I pull over somewhere and I call my sister and I say, okay, we're in a black, whatever it is. Good luck. And I hang up because... I am not about to play Where's Waldo with you for an hour, waiting for you to try to figure out, you know. That's, I always say, if you're picking up a friend from the airport, you don't do a damn thing. You just pull over and then wait for them to find you because you were very nice enough for them to come to the airport. They can figure out where you are. Um, so eventually they, I see my sister and Augustus Gloop walking to the car and they get in and immediately... My sister starts laying into me immediately. She doesn't even say hello. She she's, gets in the car and starts going like, 
you know, uh, well, are you, were you drinking? You smell like liquor. And I said, shut up. No. I had a very long day at work. And it, you, that first thing you're going to say to me when you get in the car and I drove three hours in rush hour traffic is, were you drinking? Fuck you, sis. Um, I told her, shut the hell up. And she's yapping, yapping. And I'm trying to drive out of LAX, you know, and my GPS is going like, turn left, turn right, you know, and all the, I see all the exits that are just basically gibberish. There's four lanes, like I'm a ping pong ball going down the chute. What's, is that the right ping pong? No, what's the one where you, or what's the one that's in the machine and you're doing the, it goes up all the things. That's not ping pong. Maybe it is ping pong. I thought ping pong was, okay, whatever. The thing where you're, no, I really want to get this. What is the thing that it goes all around the thing? Ping pong. We're gonna, we're gonna go play. Fuck! All right, I'm not gonna get it. But it's basically, it's like that because I'm trying to find the exit for LAX. And I am very smart because a long time ago, one time, I had an air horn and I blew it in the car and I had all the windows rolled up and I thought I had gone deaf because it was so loud, it damaged my hearing and I literally couldn't hear anything. I was I had tinnitus or whatever it's called. It was like beep. So I said, oh my God, I just deafened myself. And then I waited five minutes and it went away and I was fine. So then I realized I can do this. I can use this to my advantage. So I had, bring, I had brought an air horn I have, I, you know, on in the car and it's for exactly this situation. I blow the air horn and then they're like, ah! you know, um, oh my God, I can't hear anything. Pull over. And I'm like, just shut up. You're going to be fine. I just need you to shut up so that I can find this exit and get us home. So they're like, oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to focus on the exit. And I finally... I just pick one. I don't even know which one it was. I just go in one. And I'm like, I, there's, we're probably going to be able to get home from wherever this is. The GPS reroutes me and it shows me the new route. And I see that we're going to go through the Santa Monica Mountains. And we're going to pass one of my favorite viewpoints, vistas, um, scenic overlook. And I'm like, oh my gosh, guys, you, we, you just got to LA. Wouldn't it be so cool to see... LA under the twinkling lights, LA is so breathtaking at night. And I hardly ever get to see it because most of the time I just get home from work and drink myself to sleep at 10, 7 at p.m. So I don't get to see the city at night. So I'm like, yay, let's stop over at the scenic viewpoint and see the city. You know, there might not, I always say this, you, there might not be any stars in the sky because of the smog, but it's also because they're all down here. The stars are at the ground instead of the sky it's flipped so i thought that was pretty good i you know i was sometimes i thought about like uh writing a little poetry book you know or just a little because i say a lot of stuff like that and i'm like that's pretty good so i should i feel like i should put that all on a like rupee car you know or whatever her name is um anyway they're like i can't hear you because remember i forgot i had per temporarily deafened them with the air horn. So I say, just trust me. We're going to go someplace. You're going to really love it. It's on the way home. Um, so I turn off into the mountains and we are plunged into darkness because in LA, the craziest thing about LA is that there's in a lot of places, you're in the middle of the second biggest city in America, but you go into the mountains, you take one wrong turn and you're in the middle of nowhere. There's no cell service, nothing. And so now I'm realizing, okay, this might have been a mistake because I don't know if I'm too drunk. I don't know if I'm over the legal limit, but, you know, I am not, I'm also very tired. That's part of it too. I'm very tired. So I'm dry. It's legal to drive tired. You can't get pulled over and take a tired lizer. Um, so I'm driving around, driving around and it's, there's so many windy turns and there's no street lights and I, I'm like, you know, there's a couple points where I'm like, oh, and I, and I jerk the steering wheel because we almost go off the cliff. Um, so I'm like, crap, but there's nothing I can do because I'm already halfway down the road. So if going through or turning around would be the same thing. Um, my sister's freaking out, yapping, yapping, yapping. 
Um, and then I hear it. Wee wee and I see the lights, flashing lights. And I'm like, crap. And I look in the rear view mirror and yep, there's a fucking 5-0 right behind me. So I'm like, well, maybe he's gonna, maybe he needs to, you know, do something. He's saving a kitten that's stuck in a tree or something. So I pull over um, and I'm hoping he turns around, goes around me, but he doesn't. And he pulls right up behind me. So I'm like, fuck, fuck me in the fucking tits. This cannot be happening. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever been in that situation where it's like something hap something is happening that's so bad. You are like uh, this, you just can't even process it. And you're like, I would do anything to not be in this situation right now. So I'm thinking about ways I can kill myself, ways that I can, you know, fuck me in the fucking tits. God, fuck. Why is he, is that the same one? Why are there so many around here? Is he, did he leave? Is he turning around? Okay, whatever. Um, okay, we're good, I hope. Um, I pull over and I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about all the ways I can kill myself, you know, trying to get out of the situation. And eventually I settle on, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm a very charismatic guy. I'm just gonna sweet talk him. I can talk my way out of this, you know? Um, I keep a bottle of Febreze in my car, so I spray the Febreze all over myself. I spray it in my mouth, you know, so I, so I don't smell like liquor. I just start slapping myself. Um, and the uh, officer comes up and I roll down the window. I crack the window. You don't have to roll the window all the way down. Remember that, if it's not, that ever happens to you. I crack the window. And the officer says, sir, uh, you know, you were kind of swerving around back there. Are you okay? Uh, have you been drinking tonight, this evening? And I said, no, sir. Um, I was, I had a very long day at work. I'm picking up my family from the airport. Um, and we just want to be on our way. So you can go ahead and let us go because there's nothing going on. That's bad. Um, and he says, would you mind stepping out of the car for me? So I'm like, great. And my sister's like, mm -hmm. and I can tell she's about to, I can tell that the cork is about to pop out. She's going to start making things 10 times worse for me than they already are. So I should make sure to shut the windows and I lock her in. And I lock her and Augustus Gloop back there in. Um, and I get out and I'm like, let me just handle this. The police officer asks me if I want to take a breathalyzer. This is very, very important, and I want everybody to take note of this. You do not have to say yes. They will make you think that you have to say yes, but you do not. And the reason you should never say yes is if you're actually drunk, which I don't know I was, but I'm thinking maybe I should, say no. Because if you say no, then what they do is they take you back to the station and they give you another type of, I think it's a blood test. They take you back to the station and they give you a different kind of test later. That means time passes. And if you're not drinking anymore, your blood alcohol level, the idea is that your blood alcohol level will go down in the time. This is true. In the time it takes to take that other type of test. So I'm like, great. I'm going to just, no officer. I do not consent to a breathalyzer. Take me to the station and do the other thing. Um, so he's like, all right. And he walks back over to his cruiser and I'm like, okay, all right. I'm trying to sweat it out. I'm jogging in place, hoping that I'll sweat it out, you know, lowering my BAC. Um, and then I hear sort of a, sort of a sound like this banging sound. And, and I hear somebody going like, and then I hear sort of a, it's crunching. I look over at the rental car and I just see the taillights go like whoop, boop, off the cliff. And I'm like, huh? You know, I, cause I, cause I'm not even sure that I just saw what I saw. The officer at his cruiser goes like, oh my God. And he runs over to the side of the cliff. And he's like, 
Uh, okay. back up. We're calling for backup. We got a, a woman and, the, and her kid in, in, in a car and it went off a cliff. You know, whatever they say. And then I'm like, oh my God, I must have left the car in drive and then got out and locked all the doors and locked them in. So they went off a cliff. And then I'm like, hell yes. This is my, this is the, a miracle. This is the big break I needed. And I sprint in the other direction because now the cop is f all focused on the kid and the whatever my sister that are in the car at the bottom of the cliff so they don't care about me anymore so i run off into the woods and it's pitch black so i'm gone you know i'm crawling over and through the sticker bushes and all that stuff um and i just am huffing it you know <laughs> for a long time probably a half hour um, and eventually I end up on some street and some really nice street in Beverly Hills, whatever it is. But at least I know that I am not in that situation anymore. I fucking got away with it because of an act of God. Because like I said, God came down and I feel like I'm going to cry every time I think about it because it was literally the best possible thing that could have happened to me in that situation. And it seems so Im improbable that it could happen, but it did. I get a L Uber or a Lyft. I'm not going to say which one it was because they're not paying me. Um, and I go back home. The Uber was expensive as hell. It was a hundred bucks, but whatever. That's a small price to pay for my freedom, you know. And now I'm in the clear because once I get home, I realize, you know, my they can come to my fucking house if they want, but I'm probably my I haven't. Well, I had kind of, I was sipping on a thing, but, but even so I was probably not as drunk as I was before. So even if they do come here, I'm probably going to be below the legal limit. Right. Um, so I'm sort of like pinching myself. I can't even believe this is real. Sorry. I thought I heard somebody playing music and I hate music. Um, I can't even believe this is real. So I'm sort of like, oh, huh. and I take a couple of, of um, perks because I have a few left over from a surgery. And I go I, off to Betty Bye. Uh, and then I wake up the next morning at noon. This was Saturday morning. Um, and I see I have a bunch of missed calls from a contact that I put in my phone as do not answer all caps with big swirling sirens because that is the hospital that I have now had two or three run-ins with that were the worst experience of my entire life. The hospital that tries to ruin my life every single time I do anything. Um, I have a couple missed calls. So I'm like, oh my fucking Christ. And I ring back and at first I, I'm I don't want them, they hate me over there, so I'm trying to make them think maybe it's not me. So I, they answer, and I'm like, hello there. I'm trying to do a British accent. How are you? I was, I'm not doing it as good as I did it before. I did it very good. Um, I watched a lot of Love Island, so you tend to pick up the British, hello. I, it's, okay, it was better than that. Um, and they're like, Mr. Henschel, uh, and I'm like, yeah, so I dropped the accent. I'm like, yeah, what is it? And they say, don't play your, I don't want to hear your stupid music. If you're driving in your car, either shut the fucking windows or turn your stupid shitty music off. Um, I, so I say, yeah, this is Mr. Henschel. What do you want? And they say, your, um, your sister and your nephew are here. Apparently there was some kind of incident. And I said, yeah, there sure was. What happened? Um, and she said, well, your sister, uh, has a broken arm and Augustus Gloop, that's not what she's called him. That's what I call him. Um, snapped his neck and is, and is paralyzed. And I I'm sort of been trying not to laugh on the phone because let's just say, if you knew this kid, then that would be very funny to you. Um, so I'm trying to stifle my laughter. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, so, so what? What do you want me to do about it? You know? Um, and they're like, well, they are asking for you because apparently you were supposed to do something and, and blah, blah, blah. They're like, you're, they're, I'm their contact here. And I'm like, well, 
I don't know what they want me to do because it seems like the answer is pretty clear. You know, this was bad for them, but this is the best thing that ever happened to me for a lot of reasons. You know, because now not only did I narrowly avoid a DUI and $10,000 fine and months in jail by the skin of my teeth, but also now I got a free weekend and I got a free week. Yes. Right. So I'm like, I don't know. Tell them to go fuck themselves. I didn't say that. But, uh, but you know, I mean, it seems pretty clear. Just wait, uh, you know, wait to recover. In my sister's case, wait to recover. Gustus Gloop, you know. That, but people can be very, disabled people are very happy. You know, there's nothing wrong with being paralyzed. So there's some stuff. So honestly, making a big deal about it would be ableist. Seriously. That's why I treat it. So I'm like, I don't really care because you shouldn't care either. There's nothing wrong with being disabled. You know, so it's not a big deal. Um, so, yeah, I, I said, well, they can just ride it out here and then go home if they want. I don't know. They're adults. Well, the, my sister is an adult. She could, She's a big girl. She can take care of herself. So I hang up the phone. That was Saturday. And um, I live my life. And today I think I'm about to head to the B-E-A-C-H, the beach, because Right now, I'm just so happy to be alive. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this blue sky and this green trees and the birdies. And I'm like, thank you, fuck. You know, it's just one of those days where every breath feels like I'm breathing in a million bucks. And it feels good. So, yeah, that's it, I guess. I mean, I'm just fucking so thrilled. Because I have to tell you, it was really not looking good there for a minute. Um... So thank you, Lord. He has a plan for all of us. He really does. He sent me there. I mean, what he did for me was the best possible thing that ever could happen to me. So I guess it, that my sister and Augustus Gloop were just you know, casualties, uh, collateral damage. No, there's nothing wrong with what happened. They're fine. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. The end. <laughs> See you later.